Hello, everybody. Uh, today's lesson is on using uh, slopes of lines to show that they're parallel, and then uh, use that fact to uh, prove that quadrilaterals are either parallelograms or um, possibly rhombuses or trapezoids, any of those shapes that have opposite sides parallel. Um, so go ahead and open up your books to page 495. And we'll get started there. So on page 495, we have this uh, fact here that we've already talked about before, which says that two lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Okay, so if we can calculate the slope of two lines, if they turn out to be the same number, then we know the lines are parallel. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and skip down to page 497, question B. Uh, if we want to show that this figure, PQRS, is a parallelogram, we know the definition of a parallelogram is that it's a four-sided figure with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So all we need to do is calculate the slope. So the slope from P to S, the slope of this segment here, we're going down one, two, three, four, and over one, two. So down four over two is negative two. So the slope of um, PS is um, negative two. So I'm gonna put that answer there. And then we can do the same thing for the slope of its opposite side. From Q to R, we're going down one, two, three, four and over two, so rise over run. The rise is negative four, the run is two, so we get the same answer, negative two. So the slope of QR is negative two. Since these are the same, that tells us that QR must be parallel to SP. Lines with the same slope are parallel. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with the other two segments of the quadrilateral. So uh, from P to Q, we're going down one, two, and over one, two, three, four. So down two over four, that is negative one half, which they already have that one there written for us. And then from S to R, this segment, we're going down one, two, and over one, two, three, four. So again, down two over four, so that is negative one half. Again, and since these turn out to be the same, we have the same slope. So that tells us that PQ must be parallel to RS. And since we have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, We can say, since both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, P, Q, R, S is a parallelogram. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Use the slopes to show that the opposite sides are parallel. Okay, on the next page, page 498, I would like you to try numbers four and five in your groups. So um, I think uh, probably about 10 minutes, so maybe five minutes per problem. Um, go ahead and pause the video and everybody try four and five together in your groups. And uh, when everyone is uh, has had a chance to try both of those and discuss in your groups, we'll press play on the video and uh, then see how you did. Okay, so for problem number four, we're trying to show that this is a trapezoid 
And um, a trapezoid, all we have to do is show that there's at least one pair of opposite sides parallel. So it looks like JK and LM are parallel. And so if we calculate the slope of JK, that turns out to be negative one third. We're going down two and over six, so that's negative one third. And then the same thing for the slope of L ML. The slope of ML is also negative one third. We're going down one and over three. Since those both have the same slope, um, then they are parallel. And so we can say since JK is parallel to ML, I'm going to put in parentheses, same slopes. then J, K, L, M is a trapezoid. So that's all you have to do for that one because a trapezoid only has to have one pair of opposite sides parallel, and we did that. Now for problem number five, to show that this is a parallelogram, we're gonna need to show that it has two pairs of opposite sides parallel. And um, so we can see that the slope of BC is down two over one, same with AD, down two over one. So Slope of BC um, is the same as the slope of AD. Both of those have a slope of negative 2, down 2 over 1. Um, and then if we look at the slope of AB, That's up one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, two, three, four. So up six over four, rise over run. Uh, six over four reduces to three halves. Um, and then if we do the same thing from C to D, we're going over, or uh, we're going up one, two, three, four, five, six over one two, three, four. So again, it's up six over four, which is three halves. So those slopes are both the same. Slope of CD, they're both equal to three halves. And so um, this fact, since those slopes are both the same, that tells us BC is parallel to AD and AB from this one, AB is parallel to CD. And since we have two pairs of opposite sides parallel, we can say A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, so now um, go to the next page, 499. We're going to take a look at example B. Uh, the directions, what the directions say is find the coordinates of the missing vertex in each parallelogram. So we're going to use the fact that uh, we know the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So if they give us three of the vertices, we can find the missing vertex. And so point P is at negative three, zero. So go ahead and plot the point negative three, zero. That's point P. Point Q is at negative 2, 4. So point Q is there. And point R is at 2, 2. And we need to connect those in order from P to Q to R. So you can kind of see where the missing vertex would have to be. It would have to be down here somewhere so that um, we get a four-sided figure, a parallelogram. And what we need to use is the slope from P to Q, because we know that since this slope, we're going up one, two, three, four, and over one, since the slope is four over one, then the opposite side, this missing side that we haven't drawn yet, 
would need to also have a slope of 4 over 1. So that means from R, we should be able to go down 4 and backwards 1 to create a slope of 4 over 1. And so I went down 4 and backwards 1 to find the location for the missing point, which would be point S. And so the coordinates of point S in this case, positive 1, negative 2. So S is at positive 1, negative 2. So positive 1, negative 2 is what we got. Okay, so um, go on to the next page, page 500. And I'm going to have you try this one in your groups, problem number 7 on page 500. So go ahead and pause the video, try number 7, and after maybe about 4 minutes, um, go ahead and play the video and check your answers. Okay, so the points that are given to us were J, K, and M. <clears throat> we can't connect them in that order, J, K, M, because there's an L in between the K and the M. So we have to connect them in the order M to J, then J to K, and then K is going to go to L. And so L is going to have to be out here somewhere. So then we can use the slope of the opposite side. So um, we can do it two ways. We can look at the slope of this is 1 because we're going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3. Uh, so this um, slope of the same side from M to L would also have to have a slope of 1. So that's going to put point L right here at 4, 0. And... Um, you can also confirm, you could do that with, with the slope of JM as well. The slope of JM is down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So from K to L, we go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And so it works out either way, whether you use the slope of JK or if you use the slope of JM, you can find the same location for point L, which is at 4, 0. So that's it for lesson 10.1. Um, you can uh, go ahead and stop the video, and then if you're uh, ready to start 10.2, you can go on and watch video 10.2. Have a great day.